Hello, my people. How are you doing today? We have got a lot to cover. Let's get at it, man. Fill your cups, grab your pen and paper for the round table at the end of the show, and let's do this, people. morning people god i hope your coffee's as good as mine mine is just hitting particularly good this morning i am telling you mm. my daily is dunkin but no uh, it, it's good it's good uh let's let's talk a little bit about old tyler bober we're going to do a little, little bit of an update we talked about him in the last show but there's a little bit more has come out and I, I think we really need to talk about it before we but before we get into tyler let's talk about john fetterman John Fetterman has come out and said he really doesn't like the fact that we're talking about Tyler Bobert. And John Fetterman put a tweet out, said, this is a family cri in crisis and the recreational cruelty I see on social media needs to be out of bounds. I know the impact this has on children. I'm calling for restraint because cruelty has substantial collateral damage. We can't ever forget that they didn't sign up for this. <laughs> now, you know me, folks. I've, I've talked about John Fetterman before. I like John Fetterman. I do. And um, you also know that I love, Obar uh, I love Michelle Obama. I really do. I deeply admire her. Incredibly. But do you know she was an executive in a hospital system? This is an incredibly smart, capable woman. And I disagree with her. You know, John Fetterman's talking about that. When they go low, we go high. Crap. And my answer to John Fetterman is no. No, I will not leave Tyler Bobert alone. And, and let me just explain why. OK, I will not go after a minor. I, I will not go after a minor child. I will not do that. But Tyler Bobert is not a minor. Tyler Bobert is 18. That's reason number one. Reason number two, Tyler Bobert's mama is they're having to rewrite the dictionary for her. She is beyond a hypocrite. She attacks the Biden family and Hunter Biden specifically on the daily. Just lies, just flat out lies. When Lauren Boebert and her husband both have mug shots, have both been arrested. Her husband was arrested for showing his penis to minors. Yeah, he was showing his spiderweb tattoo on his penis to minors. In a bowling alley. Oh, man, that coffee is good. So, no, no, that, that's reason number two. They are hypocrites. And, no, I will not cut them slack. Reason number three is we're finding out more about what this young man did. Uh, it's being reported that one of his victims was a woman who had brain cancer was undergoing treatment for brain cancer. She had $75 left to her name. And he broke into her car. So, no, no. Reason number three, the victims. The other thing that's come out is that the 
17 year old girl and i know I, i've been able to deduce that she was 17 uh he got se- caught several charges for contributing to the delinquency folks i see the donations i'm really grateful thank you for all the donations i really do but we've got a lot to cover today so i'm, I'm just going to blaze through i'm not going to bring the comments up like i normally do we've got a lot to cover today folks i'm really sorry about that and i'm very grateful for the for the don- donations i really am i am seeing them thank you um but the the other reason is, you know, the victims, who the victims are. Um, he was charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Uh, one of those minors was a 17-year-old girl. The way I was able to deduce that she was a 17-year-old girl is, A, she's a minor, which means she's under 18, but B, he wasn't charged with rape. And what I mean by that is, One of the things that's come out yesterday is he made a sex tape with this girl. The age of consent in Colorado is 17. He hasn't been charged with statutory rape. So I know she's 17. And how do the police know that he made a sex tape? Yeah. So, no, I'm not going to cut Tyler Douchebag Bobert some slack. Reason number four, I'm not going to cut Douchebag Bobert slack, is this little princess right here. See, I have a memory. I don't forget, and I don't forgive. This little cutie is Amy Carter. She grew up in the White House. She spent four years in the White House, and Republicans were absolutely ruthless and cruel about the way they talked about her. One of the things that used to come around that used to happen was the Republicans would talk about Amy Carter and uh, they would make a joke that, you know, Amy Carter was around when you heard the barking, calling her a dog. So, yeah, no, I, I, I don't really, really feel a lot of sympathy to Republicans for their adult children. Reason number five. John, if you're paying attention, reason number five is Chelsea Clinton. Uh, You don't have to be as old as I am to remember how Republicans treated Chelsea Clinton. The things they said about Chelsea Clinton, the god-awful crap they said about Chelsea Clinton, who went through her awkward years in the White House. So, no. While I am better than Republicans, and no, I won't go after minor children, screw Tyler Bobert. He's a douchebag and a criminal. And now he has matching mugshots to go along with his mother and father. And I'm trying to find out, folks, who, who the woman is that they're reporting on. I haven't found her name yet. Um, I haven't found her name yet. Uh, she, when I do, I, I will pass it on. Uh, hopefully, they'll start a GoFundMe for her so I can contribute. Uh, if, if, if I can find a GoFundMe for her, I'll contribute in, in, in y'all's name. You know, you, you potheads are good and decent people. But yeah, a woman with $75 left to her name didn't need to come into contact with Tyler Bobert. But that's the updates from that. Uh, the other big news from yesterday is the Republicans uh, are the dogs that caught the bumper. <laughs> and Hunter Biden was driving the car. You know, they were running their mouths continuously, just on and on and on and on about, it. we want Hunter Biden to testify, and he, he won't testify, and he's avoiding testifying. And Hunter Biden kept saying, look, I'll, I'll testify. I want to do it in public. I want to do it in public. I don't want you to be able to play games. I want to do it in public. And the Republicans were like, no, no, you need to just do what we tell you to do. Well, Hunter Biden went and testified privately Wednesday, 
While you and I were talking Wednesday, he was sitting down with Republicans. Seven hours. Yeah, David Barnett, exactly. The You know, Sasha and Malia Obama and the awful things they said about them. Yeah, I didn't forget. I didn't forget. I am not a high road Democrat. But yeah, Hunter Biden sat down with them for seven hours and they did not get the testimony they wanted. Everything fell apart for the Republicans. The wheels have completely come off. They're ridiculous. Ridiculous impeachment nonsense. They're they're scrambling today trying to save it. But he ended this yesterday. And I got to tell you, the corporate media is really missing the best parts. They really are missing the better, the best parts. The transcripts have c- came out yesterday. Um, but yeah, they did not get the testimony they wanted. He was up front. He answered their questions, did not take the fifth on anything. And again, sat with them for seven hours. And if you want to have some idea how badly it went, James Comer got up almost immediately and left. Never asked a single question. Never asked a single question. It, it, they tried to go on, you know, Comer tried to go on Hannity and spin, oh, yeah, this was very damaging to, to Hunter Biden. This is, but no, the transcripts say just the opposite. He destroyed their entire narrative. They never once put forward one piece of evidence tying Joe Biden to any of his businesses. Uh, Hunter Biden very clearly stated, my father has never been a part. That is a bright line that we always had in our family. Uh, My father was never a part of any of my business operations at all, ever. The Republicans tried to come at him and say, well, hey, hey, uh, what about governments that you work for? <laughs> Hunter Biden destroyed that also. I have never in my life worked for a government. And then threw gasoline on Jared Kushner and lit him on fire <laughs> and put into congressional record. Unlike Jared Kushner, who was the son-in-law of Donald Trump and worked in the White House. I, Hunter Biden, have never worked for any government ever but yeah they they really missed some of the really good parts of of the testimony and you if you want to know how well this is andy biggs on fox So I think when the transcript comes out, it's going to read. It's going to read well for them because they did a great job prepping for a read. But that's. Oh, but, interesting. But the reality is, yeah, yeah. But when it, when you get down to it and you start parsing the words, you start realizing, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. Well, so I think when the transcript mm. comes out, it's going to read. It's going to read well for them because. They're really trying hard to try to come up with anything positive about that, but they can't. They 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 just can't. They, they, they really can't. And, and to give you some idea how it went inside, here's, here's Jasmine Crockett talking about uh, Hunter Biden in, in interaction at the first break with Nancy Mays. Came across, right? Like when we took the first break, One of the things that hasn't been talked about that a lot of people probably didn't see, but I was sitting next to Robert Garcia and next to him was Nancy Mace. And Hunter decided to walk directly up to Nancy Mace, no one else. And he said to her, I hope that you learn that I'm not the person that you think that I am. And Mm. she was deceptive and she was rude, came across, right? Like when we... Yeah, she was rude and dismissive, and yeah, things were not going well for them. And Hunter Biden felt comfortable enough in his testimony to say, walk up to Nancy Mo- Mace and say, see? But this is Nancy Mace right after that, that, that exchange. She ran out and immediately ran to the cameras. And this is what Nancy Mace had to say. Hey, 
hey, how are y'all? Uh, we said we weren't going to do this, but since the left came to the microphone in the middle of the deposition, that I'm going to do the same thing this morning. The two things I'm going to say this morning so far in the first hour is that Hunter Biden is being defiant and also dishonest. And his testimony, some of it, is in direct conflict with other witnesses. And so the transcripts will be out. I won't go into detail. You'll be able to see it for yourself. But um, it's no surprise. It's no shock. Uh, that he is being that way. And in some cases, he doesn't recall. He said that multiple times this morning, which again is not a shocker either. But um, defiant and dishonest would be the way that I would describe his testimony so far in the first hour. Is he pleading the fifth? No, he's not done that yet. But no, he didn't plead the fifth. That his testimony is in direct conflict with other witnesses that so far the Oversight Committee has interviewed. Which witnesses? Uh, you'll read the transcript. I'm not going to go into that. Okay. I want you to watch this part. Watch her kind of die inside when this reporter asks, what witnesses is he in conflict with? Uh, are we talking about Smirnoff? Are we talking about Smirnoff? It's an indirect conflict with other witnesses that so far the Oversight Committee has interviewed. Which witnesses are they? Uh, you'll read the transcript. I'm not going to go into details because we agreed that we would not do that in the middle of the deposition. So once the yeah, she'll come out and make allegations, but she's not going to tell you the witness. Well, I tell you what, I'll tell you the witnesses. Uh, they didn't talk about Alexander Smirnoff. They they really didn't uh, much at all. Uh, he didn't come up. The Republican Party he wants nothing to do with their re confessed Russian spy that is now in prison. Who's the witness that they're talking about? Well, it's this guy. Jason Galanis. Jason Galanis. Good looking kid, huh? Yeah. This is their other witness. Who's Jason Galanis? Well, you would address him. You would address him as federal inmate number 80739 198. See, Jason Galanis is currently serving a 14 year hitch for scamming the Ogallala Indian tribe. He's sitting in an Alabama prison. That that that's their big witness. That's their big witness. But it, it, it gets better. It it gets better. Um <laughs> Uh, this is, you know how they like to say the Biden crime family, the Biden crime family. Well, this is a picture of Jason's dad, John Galanis, when he was young. This is John Galanis. Tough guy, huh? Looks like a real tough guy, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he is. Guy's fucking brutal. He's the head of the Galanis crime family. And I don't mean like hyperbolic like the Republicans do. I mean, literally the Galanis crime family. Yeah, Jason Galanis is the heir apparent to an American crime family. That's that's their witness. <laughs> oh my God! And Jason Galanis get the, it gets it gets great. It it it, it just. This is who Nancy Mays is talking to. He he's he's con, he he's conflicting witnesses. He's conflicting witnesses. Well, uh, yeah, Galanis has been just talking smack about how he's got this, he's got that, he's got all this evidence and this, that, and the other, and 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 I can prove that Joe Biden's taking bribes and yada yada yada. And they went and interviewed him in prison, and he sat next to his attorney and said, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. Their big prison witness, they're actually going with, now follow me here, he tells the Republicans, oh, I got all this dirt. I got, I got emails. I got stuff, man. I got emails and all this other stuff. They go to interview him in prison, and he sits next to his lawyer and says, I got nothing. I got nothing. Joe Biden was not involved in any any businesses that I know of. Um, I got nothing. But they're still running with the original testimony where he tells them, oh, I got all this stuff, man. I got all this. This is what 
what they're going with. And I can't get enough of it. I cannot get enough of it. it. It's just, yes, please, more. And then you get Byron Donalds. Byron Donalds went out on Fox and he's like, oh, yeah, this uh, the transcript you know, is one thing. You know, the trans- they're really scared of that transcript coming out. They are because they're just getting drug. Uh, Matt Gates got drug by Hunter Biden. Uh, he Matt Gates asked him, "Were you were you doing drugs when you were the when you were on the board of Burisma? And Hunter Biden's response to him is, um, "Should you be the one asking me that? Should you be the one asking me that question?" I mean, it's like, and and then Gates tries to be a, a tough guy after after you know Hunter Biden just just smacks him there, and he's like, "Well, what about your your dad? Did he ever did he ever phone in? Did he ever phone in when you were having business meetings?" Hunter Biden says, "Yeah, uh, of course. He's my father. We're a close family. I take his phone calls. That's a rule in my family." Is that you take, we take each other's phone calls. If if he called me, Hunter Biden says, if if my dad called me right now, and to be honest with you, I'm surprised he hasn't called me because we talk almost daily. Um, I would put him on speakerphone so he could say hi to all of you. Now, Matt, if that happened, would you say you had a meeting with my dad? And Matt Gates answered, yeah, yeah, I would say that was a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hunter Biden just like punched them all in the throat. But my favorite one that hasn't been reported on at all, the, my favorite exchange that hasn't been reported on at all, that I absolutely love the most Matt Gates asked Hunter Biden, do you think you were qualified to be on the board of Burisma? And Hunter Biden read into congressional record his resume. <laughs> and then, and then told each and every member of the Republican Party at that hearing, my resume is better than your resume. And then drop the mic. <laughs> oh my God. I loved it. I have been saying this forever. Don't, I've been telling Democrats, don't run from Hunter Biden. Run to Hunter Biden. The guy ha- is incredibly successful. He's got a great work history. He's got a great education. Jesus Christ, the charity that he ran, the charity that he ran. He steps down after 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 running uh, the World Food Program for you know, for better part of, I think it was two to three years he ran it. He steps down and then two months later, they get nominated for a Nobel and win a Nobel Peace Prize for all the work that they did while he was running the charity. Compare that to the Trumps who stole from a charity for kids with cancer. They literally had their charity shut down by law because they were stealing from kids with cancer. Yeah, no, don't run away from Hunter Biden. Run to Hunter Biden. I just absolutely love that. This is my resume. This is my resume. And it is better than any one of yours. Boom. Drop the mic, get up and walk out. Yeah. Do not run from Hunter Biden. And, and this is what bothers me is that people, I, I missed your comment down there. I was, I, I'm reading the, the comments as we go. One, one person says, wow, I didn't know that about Hunter Biden. Yeah, you would have had to caught the show where I actually read Hunter Biden's resume. 
to know anything about him because the corporate media is not going to tell you anything good about Hunter Biden. No, they're not. They're trying to keep this a horse race. They're not going to tell you about Hunter Biden's charity work. Google it, Hunter Biden's charity. They went on to win the Nobel Prize for their work. I mean, just, yeah, loved it. Absolutely love it. The Republicans were the dog that caught the car. Hunter Biden was driving the car. He slammed on the brakes and <clears throat> into the back of it and then threw it in reverse and backed up over. Byron Donalds, I loved it, is sitting on, on Fox News saying, well, you know, yeah, the, the transcript reads good, but I hope we can get a public hearing. You know, I don't know if we're going to be able to get a public hearing out of it. The public needs to see this. Dude, Hunter Biden has been screaming for a public hearing. You're not going to get a public hearing because you were humiliated and there's no way in hell Comer is going to ask for a public hearing now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Seven hours of Hunter Biden absolutely taking him to the woodshed? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. Our chances of getting a public hearing just went right down the toilet. Just went right down the toilet. But yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Do me a favor, folks. Reach down, hit the thumbs up. If you're liking what I'm doing, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button so we can get more people this recommended to more people, get this audience up, get more people hearing what's actually going on. This is one that's just not making the national media. This next one is just, we're going to move on from, from Hunter. But there's more there. As we, as we go through the transcript more, there's going to be more. We'll talk about it again on Sunday, I'm sure. Uh, because there's just so many nuggets in there. And, and nobody's touched that part about the resume yet. No, nobody has touched that yet. And I've, I've looked all over the corporate media and they haven't touched it. You're going to wait for it. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. But uh, this is a good one out of the great state of Missouri. Where's my Missouri people at? Let me introduce you to Daryl McClanahan. Missouri GOP backs away from honorary KKK member running for governor. Honorary in quotes. <laughs> yeah. This, this, my friends, this is Daryl L. McClanahan III. And he is a Republican candidate for governor in the state of Missouri. He's the one in the middle on the left there, you know, hanging out in the, in the Ku Klux Klan. You recognize a flag in the back, that's a Klan flag. Uh, hanging out with the Klan members. And then that's him on the right at a cross burning, doing the old Nazi salute. Running for governor in Missouri. Yeah. Well, the Republican Party is trying to backtrack now that these pictures resurfaced. Uh, they weren't backtracking all the time, though. Uh, and Daryl's a little pissed off about this. Daryl has his feelings hurt. And he put out a tweet. I'm going to read to you and show to you. Daryl is upset. Daryl is disappointed. The Missouri GOP put out a, a, a tweet that said the Missouri Republican hard, uh, Party has been made aware that Daryl Leon McClanahan III filed for governor as a Republican despite his affiliation with the Ku Klux Klan, yada, 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 yada. Okay. We're backing away from it. In response, Daryl McClanahan says this. In response... The Missouri GOP knew exactly who I am. Chairman Myers, chairman of the Missouri GOP, uh, vetted me and knew I was a Christian identist. Uh, yeah, the, we'll, we'll talk more about Christian identists. They're, they're Christian nationalism mixed with racism, mixed with hate. Yeah, Christian identity. And that I should just not say anything bad about the Jews. Let me read that for you again without interrupting. Uh, Chairman Myers, the head of the GOP, told me when I signed up for Senate, paying my $500 fee, 
saying he had vetted me and knew I was a Christian identist and that I should just not say anything bad about the Jews. Yeah, it gets better. <laughs> when I met Prince Lazy J. Ashcroft at Vernon County Lincoln Days, we discussed the 2020 riots, and his exact words were, the blacks are a problem. Again, I received several death threats today that I'm uh, that I've made uh, the Vernon County Sheriff's Office aware of. I have forwarded my email communications with the GOP to the media and will to any other media that request it. At this point, I'm not sure if I will release the recorded conversations. Again, I will state the GOP knew exactly who I am. What a bunch of anti-white hypocrites. And it goes on. He, he, he does a bunch more rambling about the Anti-Defamation League and this, that, and the other. Uh, this is Jay Ashcroft taking a picture with old Daryl McClanahan and his, uh, right here at, at, the, at the Lincoln Days, I assume. But, yeah, um, Jay Ashcroft. Let me show you a better picture of Jay Ashcroft. Does that, does that, does that name sound familiar? Ashcroft? Ashcroft. I know you people know know who I'm talking about. This is Jay Ashcroft. He goes by Jay uh, because the name John Ashcroft is kind of taken by his daddy, Trump's Secretary of State. This is the guy that agrees according to Daryl McClanahan the third, that the blacks are a problem. When they were talking about the 2020 riots, you know, January 6th, the riots over riots, riots, they were protests over the murder of George Floyd. The blacks are a problem. Yeah, that, that, that's your Missouri Republican Party for you folks. That's, that's what they're dealing with. That's what they're dealing with over there. Meanwhile, you know, you've got Joe Biden down at the border dealing with the border situation. You've got Joe Biden and, and his secretary of state, you know, is, you know, not talking about the blacks are a problem, you know, his kid out there talking about the blacks are a problem, but Joe Biden's secretary of state is working on Middle East peace, you know, trying to get things done, running government. That That's the difference, folks. I mean, the, the Republicans are a damn clown show. They're a clown show over this Hunter Biden nonsense. They're a clown show about their family values bullshit with Bobo and, and her kid racking up, uh, you know, arrests and, and mug shots, just like mama and daddy. They are a clown show in their local candidates. They're a bunch of racist jackasses. But that wasn't the end of their bad day. Old Donald Trump got sued. See, he's been trying forever to sell his failing social media platform because, man, I tell you what, they, they, they really have. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he's got a grift there, man. It's, it's going to be worth a lot of money to him if this sale goes through. And, and, and I got to tell you, folks, they've got a deadline coming up in three weeks. They got to get it done in three weeks. What you've got is you've got Truth Social and, and Trump's social media company being bought by Digital World Ac Ac uh, Acquisition Corp. Well, the CEO of Digital World Acquisition Corp got fired because this all went so badly. This guy in the name of Patrick Orlando. This is Patrick Orlando. Not that it matters, but just putting a face to uh, the name. This is Patrick Orlando. He was the head of Digital World Acquisition Corp. He has recently been fired 
uh, because things have been going so badly in this acquisition. But in typ typical Trumpian fashion, it's got problems. First of all, Patrick Orlando there is suing and being countersued by Digital World Acquisition Corp because, you know, CEOs, they get stock options, they get stocks, they get all kinds of compensation. And I'm going to try to keep this simple. Yeah, Harold Planty, the SPAC from hell, but I'm not even going to go into SPACs and all the other stuff. I'm going to keep it very Cliff's Notes so that it's not technical and not confusing at all. You know CEOs get stocks and stuff in compensation. He owns a lot of digital world acquisition stock. Now, this isn't, this isn't a cash deal. This isn't they're going to hand Trump cash for his company. They're going to take all of the stock in Trump's company and they're going to give them Digital World Acquisition Company stock in return. Now, the Digital World Acquisition Company stock is actually worth something because they have investors. They have capital behind their stock, whereas Trump's company has been losing money since inception. They've been writing IOUs to executives for stock. Well, Patrick Orlando is saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Uh, when this happens, you're not valuing my stock appropriately. See, I have class B stock. You're going to convert it to class A stock. And the way this works is Digital World Acquisition Company is a shell company. It's designed to process this merger. Okay. That, that's what it exists for. And to make it easy to understand, this merger, I want you to imagine a computer code, okay? And each transaction is a line in the code. Are you still with me? Each transaction in this merger is going to be a line in that code. And when they get it all done and all the court challenges are over, they will set a date and then they will pull a trigger and this program will run and everybody's stock will exchange. Everybody's value will exchange. All the valuations will be there. The trans, the transfers of, uh, uh, of stock from one person to another will happen. It will all happen just like a computer programming running. Well, you've got Patrick Orlando saying, Hey, this line of the code is wrong. You're valuing my stock wrong. You're saying it's worth 1.34 shares of A stock when it's really worth 1.79 shares of A stock. You're cheating me out of 250 million shares. And he's suing them. He's suing them, saying you can't do that. And the deal's on hold. The problem is they've got three weeks to pull this off. They've got till March 22nd to pull this off three weeks from today. And they are going, haven't gone to court yet to argue this valuation. But, but that's not the end of it. That's not the end of it. Do you remember that movie, the Facebook movie? Did y'all watch that one? The Facebook movie about Zuckerberg and the original founders of, of Facebook. And he was actually sued by one of the original founders that he had, he had a, a disagreement with and they diluted the value of his stock. Yes, the social network. They diluted the value of his stock and he sued Zuckerberg and won. Well, that's kind of what Trump's trying to pull. Now that it looks like it's going to cross the finish line. No, it wasn't the Winklevoss twins. It wasn't the, it wasn't the Winklevi that we're talking about in that movie. He had a partner in the beginning of the movie. He had a partner. They went sideways. That partner had a had stock in Facebook. And Zuckerberg devalued no one else's, diluted no one else's stock but his. And the guy sued and got the original valuation of his stock, and he's worth $26 billion today because of it. Donald Trump is pulling that same kind of deal with the founders of his social media program. You got uh, Andy Latinsky and Wes Moss. 
were two of the people. They were former contestants on on his idiotic game show. Uh, they founded the company with Donald Trump. They're worth 8.6% of Truth Social. They're worth 8.6%. Trump just diluted their stock under 1%, increasing his own value because the exchange is about to happen. And good luck prying that digital world acquisition corp out of the hands of Donald Trump once he has them. So, yeah, I will be surprised if they will be able to adjudicate uh, to actually have these trials take place. Given what you've seen about Trump trials and, oh, we got a delay, we got a delay, we got a delay. Well, Trump is screaming for these trials to go through. These, the, you know, he wants judges to hear these immediately. We've only got 21 days. You know, on one hand, you got Donald Trump. Oh, we can't possibly hold a trial in the time frame that you want. And you've got the Supreme Court saying, oh, well, we've got to hear oral arguments. And that could take a while. That could take a while. But then on the other hand, you've got Donald Trump. I've only got 21 days. You've got to get this done. We need to have this hearing immediately. And there's a good chance the courts will accommodate them. So, yeah, that's the day that Donald Trump is having. He's watching his deal that is worth literally billions of dollars to him. I mean, he, his, his net value, he will be a legitimate billionaire if this deal goes through because they found Digital World Acquisition Court found suckers to buy True Social, which has never made a dime and is paying, is paying their executives in stock IOUs. Billionaires aren't smart, people. Billionaires aren't smart. But, you know, it got a little bit better. Got a little bit better. I want to talk about old Donald Trump's trip to the border. When we talk about it, I'm not going to use my images. I'm going to use their images and what they wanted you to see. See, Greg Abbott put out some pictures here on a tweet on X Chan. He's really proud of this. He's really proud of this. We're going to come back and look at this picture. He put this tweet out talking about, oh, man, the president's down at the border, and he put these pictures out. I want you to keep that in your mind. These are his pictures and what he wanted you to see. So let's talk about his pictures and what he wanted you to see. Does anybody in the audience know what crusher fines are? Does anybody know what crusher fines are? See, they don't just, you know, the gravel, see this parking lot? This is a parking lot to start with, okay? The gravel that goes in a parking lot doesn't come naturally that way. They don't just like, there isn't just like hills full of gravel to scoop up. They have to make gravel, and they start with big rocks, and those rocks go into rock crushers, and the rock crushers come in various sizes, but they all work about the same way. And this is real easy to understand. There's a big steel heavy disc in the middle, and on it are wings. And on those wings, there are bolt holes, and they put tungsten carbide pads on those wings. So they're super hard. And that wheel is run by an electric motor and spins, and it's very heavy, and it gets a lot of centrifugal force, right? And then it's spinning. Well, it's spinning inside a disc, and the disc has just the opposite direction wings on it with it has also has these pads. So they pass within a certain distance of each other, and you raise and lower that wheel to determine the gap, and that gap is what determines the size of the rock you get out. And there are different sizes of rocks that rock crushers make. They make uh, three by five rip wrap. They make, uh, you know, just gravel for driveways. 
things like that. That's where your gravel comes from. Well, one of the byproducts of that is what they call crusher finds. And you know crusher finds as jogging tracks. Jogging tracks. You, you've all been on a jogging track, right? I mean, they, 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 that, that gravel that's down there that's really fine, when you take crusher finds and you put it out and you wet it and you compact it, it gets really hard, like a jogging track. And they use it for jogging tracks because it's real easy to fix. If you get a rut or something like that, all you got to do is take and pour more crusher finds in there, wet it down, compact it, and then grate it off, and you got this nice, smooth jogging track again. You can dye it different colors, yada, yada, yada. Well, if you take a look at this picture, keep that in mind while we're talking. If you take a look at this picture, you can see, one, one I want to draw your attention to the razor wire in this picture. This is a parking lot. You're going to see an image later. Why the hell is this razor wire by a parking lot? This was this is what they're wasting my tax dollars on. They made this is fake. This was all put up for this picture. Look at it. Look to the left. That is a parking lot. That is not the river barrier. I'm going to show you the river barrier in a minute. This was all fabricated for this picture. And I want you to look at, at what is in the parking lot, which is gravel, like you see in many parking lots. And then you see what what is Greg Abbott on? And I don't mean his wheelchair. That That's, that's crusher finds. They made this walkway so that it would be wheelchair accessible for this picture. This is all fabricated. This is all fabricated for you to see, to pretend they're tough guys. But yeah, I want you to keep that in mind as we, we look at more of these pictures. Okay? Here's another picture from inside one of the command tents. My government is paying and renting those inflatable climate controlled command tents for nothing. They're commanding nothing. This is down in Shelby Park, folks. There's nothing down there. There is no purpose for this tent. Do you see any purpose, anything in this tent? They are leasing this and wasting. We had a budget surplus. We had a budget surplus last year because we took in some extra money because of inflation, because our state runs on sales tax. They're wasting it with this. Again, completely and utterly fabricated. A command tent that commands nothing. Nothing. But wait. Wait. Here they are by the parking lot. You see, you can see the crusher finds, the gray. Those are granite crusher finds. The, gr the gray ones are granite. We get those out of Oklahoma or my Oklahoma people. The tan ones are, are limestone. We get those out of the Austin area. But the gray ones like this, those, those are granite crusher finds. Those come out of Oklahoma. You see this gravel parking lot that they're in. This picture was taken at this angle so that you could see that razor wire in the background. Okay, keep that in mind. This picture was taken specifically at this angle to show you that razor wire in the background. And then, of course, you get, I mean, look at these guys' faces. Look at every one of their faces. My governor looks dumb as hell. You get Donald Trump, who looks like he's wondering, are they going to get me a cheeseburger? Am I going to get a cheeseburger? Should I get a Happy Meal? Look at it. Look at the look on his face. And then, of course, you've got the head of the DPS. That's our Texas State Troopers, D Department of Public Safety is what it's called here. Look, look at this guy. Just are these not the faces that you would expect? But wait for it. Now, remember what we talked about with those pictures, okay? Stick with me. Stick with me. 
This is a video that's going around. It's from the it's from the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail is a white wing trash site. You're asking me, Paul, why would I show a video from a white wing trash site? First, watch the video. You see that? Watch what he says here. See, he's looking at those guys across the way. He waves at him. That idiot is trying to tell people, oh, that's the Mexican people. They like Trump. That's his photographers. It didn't show? Oh, shoot. Let me show it again. Let me do it again. Thanks for catching that, honey. Thanks for catching it. Little technical glitch. Let me let me let me pull it up again. All right. Let's do this from the beginning. This is the video from the Daily Mail that they want you to see. Mr. Trump. Trump. You hear him yell, Mr. Trump. <laughs> This is what I really don't like about the corporate media. The cor corporate media is running with, oh, he sees Mexicans over there and he, you know, he's saying the Mexicans like Trump. And then the right wingers are saying, look, the Mexicans love Trump. This, uh, that's not the Mexicans. Watch it again. That's the Daily Mail photographers screaming to Trump. But we're going to break this video down and, and, and talk about it. You know, in context of those pictures that we just saw, those completely fabricated staged pictures. We're going to stop this a couple of times and I want to draw your, draw your attention. This is the Daily Mail shooting this video. All right, let's pause it right there. That's the image that they get. Now, see that? See that parking lot in the background? That was the gravel. That that that's what the gravel. And and I told you that the razor wire was a prop. It was staged. Look underneath them. You see how it's gray right here? And there's a gray walkway going up to the right. That's those crusher finds. You see, this is a muddy bank. Has anybody been to a river bank? folks been to a riverbank it's muddy it's soft it's squishy anybody taking a wheelchair to a riverbank yeah that doesn't work so well that doesn't work well look at this image you can see the muddy embankment there then you can see the gray underneath them underneath where they're standing and then the gray goes up to the right that's that crusher finds walkway that they put in place spent my tax dollars to create this photo op. To create this photo op. And then you hear the reporter, you know, for the Daily Mail, his own photographer yell, Trump. And then they try to sell it as, oh, that's Mexican people. They love Trump. Let's let's keep watching. <laughs> You see the photographers back there in the back? The angle from the Daily Mail photographer, that's the Daily Mail photographers over there on the other side of the bank taking video so that they can show this stuff. And this idiot thinks he's so out of his damn mind pudding brained. Listen to what he says. Okay, first of all, screw you, corporate media. 
Mexicans don't yell in Southern white boy accents. Trump, Trump. No, that is not a Mexican citizen over there. So screw you for trying to say that it is. They like Trump. Can you believe that? They like the government. The Daily Mail? No, I know they love Trump. Oh, I know they love Trump. They're they're right wing hacks. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back to that one picture. And then we're going to go to the map. And I'm going to show you just how staged this was. This picture right here. You see the angle from the parking lot. They did that for the background. For the razor wire in the background. Okay. This is Shelby Park. Go to the map. The only place there is razor wire on the southern border is in Shelby Park. And the first thing I want you to pay attention to is where Shelby Park is. Joe Biden was down here in Brownsville across from Matamoros, Mexico. Or pardon me. Um, right here, Brownsville. Now, why was Joe Biden in Brownsville? across from Matamoros, because that's where crossings actually happen. Where most illegal crossings happen are actually right here. Okay, you've got Reynosa and McAllen. That is another hot spot. You can see the highway that runs up, right? 281. But the majority of crossings happen here in Nueva Laredo, in Laredo, Texas. Why? I'll give you a reference where Laredo is. Let me back out, okay? This is Texas. This is Dallas, Austin. This is San Antonio. This is Nueva, Nueva Laredo. This is Interstate 35, folks. I-35. This is the one of the busiest interstates in our country. There's a reason Greg Abbott isn't here taking pictures because you can go, you can, you can get here. Laredo is a pretty decent sized town. This is one of the largest land ports in our country. You've got produce and stuff that comes up through McAllen and Brownsville where you get illegal crossings because the vast majority of illegal crossings aren't out in the desert. They're people smuggled in trucks. And you don't go to Eagle Pass to do that. Look at Eagle Pass and how remote it is. A little two-lane highway that goes to Eagle Pass. Highway 57, State Highway 57 goes to Eagle Pass. It's out in the middle of nowhere. That's why they picked this place. And that is exactly why mules and people that cross illegally don't pick Eagle Pass. The vast majority of illegal crossings happen at Laredo because I-35 here goes up to San Antonio, through Austin, through Waco and Dallas, Fort Worth, goes on to Oklahoma City from Oklahoma City, keeps going north all the way up to Kansas City, I-35, straight, straight shot. If you've got a load of illegal aliens in the back of your truck, do you go to some backwoods highway where your truck will stand out where there isn't truck traffic? No, that would that would call attention to you. That would call attention to you. Kansas City. Keeps going. Keep going north up to Des Moines. Hang a ride in Des Moines. You're in Chicago, the Milwaukee area. Keep going straight. You're in Minneapolis. So, yeah, that's why the majority of illegal crossings and why Customs and Border Patrol and our president are not out in the middle of Eagle Pass somewhere where there's nothing really happening. And this razor wire, folks, it's just in Shelby Park. Remember that picture? I said, remember that picture? It was taken at this that specific angle. Let me zoom in for you. This is Shelby Park. 
in the way in, in Eagle Pass. First of all, the one I want you to know is that Eagle Pass is actually much smaller than Piedras Negras. And you've never heard of Piedras Negras. It means black rock in uh, in Spanish. But Piedras Negras is actually a much larger town. You see the neighborhoods? And this is the International Bridge. This is where Shelby Park ends. Okay? That little area that you see, Shelby Park ends like right here. There is only razor wire along this stretch right here. This one little stretch. That's it. If you walk a thousand yards in either direction from Shelby Park, 300 paces, there's no razor wire. There's no razor wire at all. And I assure you, the walkways in Shelby Park, where you saw the original picture of, you know, Greg Abbott in his wheelchair on that Crusher Finds walkway. Yeah, that doesn't have razor wire normally either, because there are baseball fields in Shelby Park. Folks, this is fiction. It's all fiction. That razor wire ends when Shelby Park ends. Literally 300 paces along that river. But they intentionally took that picture to make it look as though that's what our southern border looks like. And they've wasted billions of dollars on this show. They rent the blow-up tents so they can blow them up whenever they want to hold a press conference. And they can go have the, the razor wire be a backdrop that ends just off camera. But they do it in Eagle Pass because the corporate media is lazy. The corporate media is lazy. And they're not going to go to Eagle Pass. But you know who is? I am. I'm going down to Eagle Pass. Or I should say, you're sending me to Eagle Pass. And I'm going to show you where that razor wire ends. I'm going to show you exactly the joke that this all is. I'm going to walk across that international bridge with my, my little cell phone, and I'm going to take selfies so you can see what a joke this whole command center in Shelby Park is. Do you know how many people in our Texas Guard they have ripped out of their lives for these photo ops? And the last thing that I want to draw your attention to on this, how many Mexicans did you see? H how many immigrants did you see? They wanted to show you those pictures. I told you those aren't my pictures. They're their pictures. Can somebody give me a head count on the number of Mexicans you saw? Zero. Zero. Where's your invasion? Where's your invasion? If you watched clips of this on Fox News and the other corporate media, they looped in old footage from one of those damn paid-for caravans and told you that's what it looked like. But you saw with your own eyes the pictures they wanted you to see. And that's why I wanted you to see their pictures. Not mine. I'll show you mine in, 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 in a little over a week. I'll show you my pictures. This was their pictures that they wanted you to see. What kind of invasion did you see? Now, I told people, I told people, look, Christmas rush. It's Christmas in December. That's why they're down there. That's why they're down there taking these pictures, because there will be people there in December because it's Christmas and families want to be together at Christmas. That's your invasion. 
folks. They wanted to get together for Christmas. This is now. This is February. Ain't nobody there. It's all a waste of tax dollars. They've ripped guardsmen out of their lives for photo ops. They're putting razor wire up for props. Folks, you can walk. I am not kidding. It is literally 300 paces in either direction. And you can walk around that razor wire. It is manufactured. Exactly, Facebook user. I'm sorry, Facebook folks. They don't put your name up. They just call you Facebook user. I apologize for that. But it's a manufactured disaster. It is. And they've wasted billions, billions of dollars on this. And every time you see, I want you to pay attention. Every time you see, you know, 700 pounds of fentanyl were seized at the border. One, the important word is, I know what the word seized means. And two, way to go, Joe, because it's Customs and Border Patrol, the federal government. Remember that jackass I showed you from DPS, our, our state troopers, DPS? They don't do shit. They don't. They're getting paid a ton of money to drive around on camera. That general you saw that was breaking the law, because you can't LARP around you, you cannot, you know, veterans are calling this out like crazy. You cannot LARP around in uniform for, for what is obviously a campaign event. This was a campaign event. That guy gets paid six figures, folks. He has a job. He has a real job. And his headquarters ain't Shelby Park, I guarantee you. It's not. They took him away from his job, flew him to Eagle Pass, because it's out in the middle of nowhere, on my dime, for this show. Screw these people. Screw these people. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. You know, I, you know, I, I am, I am going to go down there, and I'm going to show you people what this really looks like. I'm going to show you what this really looks like. But anyways, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Uh, we've got a few minutes left. It's Friday. Friday! We made it through another week. We made it through another week. And, uh, folks, uh, I appreciate your support. That's how I'm going to be able to go down, pick up my life, and go down to the border and shoot those pictures because of your support. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. But, yeah. Folks, we've really got to, we've really got to, to put an end to these Republicans. We can't do this. We cannot have the Democrats working, doing their job, the day-to-day -day ugly grinding the sausage of government, and then the Republicans doing only this. This nonsense with Hunter Biden. They held their hearing and presented no evidence, confronted him with no evidence. Nothing. And then came outside and walked to a camera and lied and lied. You got Byron Donalds going on Fox and lying. You know, it's just Nancy Mace walking out to cameras. Oh, we've got witnesses. What witnesses? Uh, I, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that because then you'll report their names. And people will know, you know, are you talking about the Chinese spy that's in jail for, 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 the, for the op? Are you talking about the Russian spy that's in jail for the op? Or are you talking about the member of the, the Galanis crime family? Which witness are you talking about? I love you, folks. Any questions that you have or anything like that, feel free to throw them out. We'll hang out for a few minutes. I uh, appreciate the support, Colleen, Sarah. I really do. 
Uh, and of course, I will be safe. I will be safe. I'm looking forward to taking those pictures from the bridge. Uh, we're going to walk right across and, and snap pictures the entire way. Then I'm going to go down. I'm going to drive down to each end of Shelby Park. I'm going to take pictures and show you exactly what this nonsense looks like. Since it's coming off a river, there will probably be a hill somewhere. I'm going to try to find a hill so I can get an overlook shot, too. Oh, just reading through the comments. Forgive the pause here. Uh, reading through the comments. See if you got any anything for the round table. Casey says, I need a mug, man. Go to the Texas Paul store, texaspaulstore.com. Get your, get your pothead mug. You know, uh, folk, I appreciate it, Joseph Gladi. I, I, I'm always careful, but I got to tell you, there's nothing to be, nothing to be scared of. Crime is uh, very, very low. You know, there's really, I'm, I am more concerned about Republicans down there than I am going to the border. I, I really am. You know, let's. Let, you know, they talk about oh, cartels and all that other nonsense. It's nonsense. It's made up nonsense. E.T. says, many day-to-day many day -day people are not aware of any of this. We need to inform them. If anything, one at a time, please let others know what is going on. Yeah, or E.T., like I said, hit the thumbs up button. Google will do that job for you. Google will recommend this to other people if you just hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Whenever we have a show, I will bring you this information. I will point things out to you like that. They made a walkway for Greg Abbott to roll down to the riverbank. That's where my tax money's going. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Nikki Cockrell says, what about the Supreme Court kicking the can down the road? So far... That's a great question. So far, I'm seeing a lot of hyperbolic assumption on the social media platforms. Oh, this means we can't have the trial, and this means, no, it does not. Just because they're going to hear oral arguments in April doesn't mean that they can't get this done. And the trial itself is not a long trial. If they start the trial in June, June, July, trial's over. This is not a six-month trial. It's just not. It is present testimony, present documents, and we're done. So, yeah, I am concerned, but I told you that they would take this case. If, you, if you've been watching my show, I told you they will take this case because this has never been decided before. No one has ever had to make this assertion of absolute immunity before. So, yeah, the Supreme Court is going to rule on this to clarify it. But no, the Supreme Court is not going to give Trump absolute immunity. They are not. The only thing that scares me is that they try to do one of these one-off rulings. If, you, if you're old enough to remember Bush versus Gore, when Bush sued Al Gore during the, the, the 2000 election, uh, Antonin Scalia came out and said, we're issuing a one-off ruling. This is not meant to be precedent. This isn't anything. It's a one-off ruling. That's the only thing that scares me because they will not give Joe Biden absolute immunity. The Supreme Court will not do that. They're not going to rule that in favor of Trump. They're not. The only thing that scares me is that they try to say, try to winnow their way through and do something underhanded to try to help them out anyways. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say, I don't think they're going to do that at this point. I don't. I don't. So I, I think we may be worried about nothing. I'm cautiously optimistic. 
All right. Great, great question, by the way. Thank you. We've got a couple of minutes left. We'll try to wrap this up around 1120. If I go too long, folks won't watch it. I'm sorry, folks. They just won't watch it. And the idea is to get this information out. So I love these roundtables because you folks are so involved and, 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 and know what the hell you're doing. And, and I don't just say that. That's not just hyperbole. That's not kissing your ass. I made a comment the other day. I, I, you folks keep me in line. I cannot say things that are not true. I got an email the other day. Uh, I don't remember what the conversation was about, but we were talking about um, um, inheritance when a spouse dies. I And I, not wanting to get into the legal minutia of it, just said, ah, the spouse gets it here in Texas. Whoo, I got an email correcting me. Thank you for sending it to me. You're absolutely correct. And I absolutely love you for sending that to me, correcting me that, no, that's not the case here in the state of Texas. You have to have a will or the spouse doesn't. It can be really tied up in court. The kids can tie things up because the, the kids get like two thirds and the spouse gets a third of an estate when, when a spouse dies. So, yeah, um, I love you. When I tell you people, I you are on it and you know shit, that's not hyperbole. <laughs> that's not hyperbole. All right. Kathy D says, when they complain about the trial being so close to the election, remind them that's all Trump's fault. Absolutely. Absolutely. Set your narratives now. Set your narratives now. Say that shit now so that when it happens, you're not trying to convince anybody of a new argument. You're just reminding them of what you've already been saying. All right. Uh, Robert, I'm going to say Sasade. Give me a phonetic on that so I can pronounce your name correctly. Uh, do you ever just get overwhelmed by all of this? Robert, this ain't easy, man. This isn't easy. I, I have to sit and read and read and read and read and read and read. I have way more screen time than your average person. And yes, it gets very overwhelming. It is very depressing. And when I say you folks recharge me, I am not kidding when I say that. The fact that you folks know what the hell is going on and you're not like the idiots out there. You know, I, oh, my God, I live in Texas when I run into these right wing idiots and they try to talk and you're talking to somebody. And it's like they might as well have drool coming out of their mouth because, you know, English is just bouncing off their forehead and they're not getting any of it. Yeah, I have to tell you, it 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 it. It gets heavy. It really does. Do -do -do. All right. Well, you're not idiots. You're smart. <laughs> I love our audience. Every time I have a guest on, I tell them, the audience is going to know what you're talking about. They're going to be having a parallel conversation, and they may actually be a little bit ahead of us Why we're talking about what you want to talk about. So pay attention to the chat because they're going to have questions for you. Uh, how do I relax? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a Gen Xer. I grew up on video games. I will lock my door, turn off the light, and I will slip into a fantasy land for a little while. I do that. Uh, I fish. I uh, go to dinner with my wife. I just made some new friends. You know, I just uh, grocery shopping, to be honest with you. That's why every time my wife goes grocery shopping, I go with her. I actually enjoy getting out and just walking the aisles. I mean, just just little stuff like that to get my my face out of the screen. I am older. Patricia White says I'm older, over 70, and I've been very depressed about our country. Your talks help me feel better. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're feeling better because I have to tell you, folks, let me wrap it up with this. Let me wrap it up with this, folks. This election 
isn't just scary. It isn't just a do or die election. It's also an opportunity. It is. If you show up, if you show up, we end the Republican Party. The reason they're so radical, the reason they're screaming and, and going nuts, they're dying. The Republican Party is dying. All of the numbers that are coming out for Trump show that. The Republican Party is dying. If you will show up and you will vote, we will end that nonsense. We will end that negativity. And going forward, it will be nothing but better. Because the Republicans, if they keep losing like they are on this evil nastiness, these, these you know, this whole thing, Greg Abbott is wasting billions of my tax dollars. If it doesn't pay, they won't do it anymore. If they keep losing, the people responsible for this will get put away. They'll get taken out by, by, you know, these folks, these contributors, they won't be there forever. They won't be there forever. That's why the, the corporate media is the way it is. They have to make it look like a horse race or the donors won't be there. Once it becomes painfully obvious, and that's that's the opportunity in front of you. You make it painfully obvious that this isn't working and this isn't where our country is going. Their donors dry up. Because, folks, they're old, too. They are old, too. Their donor class are in their 70s also. They're not going to be here forever. Well, folks, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being who you are and recharging me and keeping me going. Uh, it is 1123. Uh, sorry we ran so long, but please enjoy some Texas cities at night. And please hit the thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button so we can get this information to more people. Google will do it for us if you just hit the thumbs up button. Love you, folks. Thank you.